All right, cool, yeah, yeah, let's go. <clears throat> to you. No, no, cut it, not feeling it. To you. No, no, it's not. To you. Sorry, I, I saw Avengers Infinity War last night and nothing really seems important anymore. <sighs> right, come on. Let's do this. Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Two matches made for Backlash. Shinsuke Nakamura gets new music. And is anyone slightly worried that Daniel Bryan is just becoming a guy on the roster? I am Luke Owen. Vote in the poll above my head to let me know what you thought about this show as I review the 24th of April 2018 edition of SmackDown Live in about four minutes. SmackDown Live opened with the return of The Miz to the Blue brand, who cut a long promo on Daniel Bryan. His guest on Miz TV was supposed to be Brian, but instead Big Cass came out dressed in a suit. Cass cut a promo about how he was medically cleared the same day as Daniel Bryan, but no one wanted to talk about him. While some might look at Cass and Miz and think it's a control C, control V of Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, it's not. They're not working together. Miz said he doesn't need Cass's help, and Cass told him that not everything is about the Miz. This is great. This is interconnecting storylines, multiple feuds happening at the same time. But backstage we found out Daniel Bryan had been laid out by Cass, and he later told Renee Young that they will have a match at Backlash. As much as I really, really liked Cass's promo, this does feel like a huge step back for Brian. The SmackDown after Mania, he was in the main event scene with AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura, but now he's just another guy on the roster being laid out backstage and having pay-per-view matches with Big Cass. This doesn't feel like it's elevating Cass, which is clearly the idea. It's instead downgrading Brian. The Iconics then cut another awesome heel promo on Becky Lynch and Asuka, falling over themselves to laugh at their frankly rubbish jokes and awful impressions. Man, these two are awesome! They then beat Lynch and Asuka in a fine little match, with Royce rolling up Lynch with her feet on the ropes. We got a video package for Andrade Cien Almas to let us know he's coming soon, and later in the night we got a video package for Sanity, who are also coming soon. With Jey Uso taking on Harper last week, it was Jimmy and Rowan's turn to have some singles action ahead of their greatest Royal Rumble match. But while Rowan was decimating Jimmy on the outside, Naomi's music hit and she did her full entrance, distracting the Bludgeon Brothers long enough for Jimmy to roll up Rowan for the win. This was a really cool and effective ending. It's just a shame that Naomi won't be there for the match this Friday. Speaking of the women's revolution, and Renee Young brought out Carmella for the contract signing for her match against Charlotte Flair at Backlash, who re aired the same video package she showed last week, and chastised the crowd for not giving it a standing over. She played it again when Charlotte Flair interrupted. Cool as vanilla, I Charlotte signed the contract and then slammed Mella's face into the table. This was a pretty good segment. We were supposed to get Shelton Benjamin taking on Jeff Hardy, but Randy Orton came out during Jeff's entrance for the match instead. This was a fun TV outing. And as Jeff was standing at ringside, a masked man jumped the guardrail and shot blocked him. Randy took off the mask to reveal it was Old Man Withers, the guy who runs the haunted amusement park. No, it was actually Sunil Singh who got an RKO for his troubles. This distraction allowed Benjamin to hit the pay dirt and get a win over Randy Orton. It's great to see SmackDown elevate Benjamin, and he's another excellent hand to have in the United States Championship division. But you know what? It's one thing for WWE to plant fans in the audience to cheer Roman Reigns, but it's another thing for Ollie Davis to plant fans in the audience to support WrestleTalk. Backstage, the New Day was celebrating the release of their new book, which is a thing, apparently. When the bar walked in to tell them that if they win, win at Greatest Royal Rumble, they're heading back to Raw. Wait, are those the rules now? Like, I, I know we shouldn't care too much about this rather expensive house show, but I do wish the stipulations of these cross-brand matches had been made clearer so we could, you know, care about the outcomes. And in the main event, Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev Day defeated the newly reformed club when Nakamura blind tagged himself in and pinned Luke Gallows. This was a really good main event, and Nakamura now has new entrance music that is slightly 
more heelish than his previous one. After the match, AJ attacked Nakamura, but was on the receiving end of the phenomenal ball arm. Come on, AJ, buy a cup, man. Road Dog is booking this show, asking where he got one from. Nakamura set up for a Kinshasa, but Carl Anderson channeled his inner Johnny Gargano and took the bullet for Styles. As Styles was trying to recover, Nakamura hit Anderson with another Kinshasa to end the show. So that was this week's SmackDown Live in about four minutes. Hopefully you voted in the poll above my head to let me know your thoughts on this show using this rating system from top to bottom. Smack damn, smack tastic, smack bang in the middle, Ellsworthy and WWE planting fans to cheer Roman Reigns. Unlike Raw, which appears to be on pause while they get the greatest Royal Rumble and backlash out of the way, SmackDown feels like it's moving forward. AJ and Nakamura's feud remains interesting. The United States Championship scene is ever growing. We're getting teasers of NXT call-ups and the women's scene has multiple storylines on the go. And although Brian has been taken down a peg to feud with Big Cass, at least there's the intertwining storyline with The Miz. This week's SmackDown Live is a low smacktastic. It wasn't as good as Avengers Infinity War, let's put it that way. But did WWE really plant fans in the crowd to cheer Roman Reigns? Check out Ollie Davis's review of Raw by clicking the playlist to the left. And don't forget to subscribe to the Wrestle Ramble podcast to hear our full spoiler-free review of Avengers Infinity War later today. I have been Luke Owen, and that was wrestling.